So today in class, we brought up the idea of a Bernoulli equation, and there are some problems on this homework assignment associated with that. So what I'm going to do with this video here is just outline the general procedure associated with this special type of equation known as the Bernoulli equation. So let's call equation one this Bernoulli equation. It has the form dy dx plus p of x times y is equal to, and so before I go any farther, what I'd really like to highlight right now is that everything that we're looking at right now has the linear structure. This is everything that you would think of when you saw um, a linear equation that maybe you'd proceed with the uh, integrating factor method for. So the way a Bernoulli equation is going to differ is that on this right-hand side where we normally have an f of x, well, that would be a linear equation. So for a Bernoulli equation, we have this nonlinearity y raised to the nth power. And so this is a very specific nonlinear term. So we use this Bernoulli equation to really highlight this idea of transforming an ordinary differential equation, most likely nonlinear, into something else that we have a better chance of solving. So the way the transformation is going to work is this. Well, the first thing is that I don't like this y to the n. Right? I don't like it because it's jamming up the equation, which kind of looks okay over here on the left-hand side, the orange side. So what we can think to do with the whole equation, actually, is to multiply the whole equation through by y raised to the negative n power. Right, that's not a great notation, but I'm going to use it. So this y raised to this negative n power hitting this y to the n, that'll cause a cancellation. y to the n times y to the n minus um, y to the negative n. Well, the bases are the same, so I'd add the exponents. Those exponents sum to zero, so that would really just be y to the zero term. The rest of the equation looks like this. This is dy dx times y to the negative n plus p of x times y to the 1. I'm going to be explicit that that 1 is there, and then I have y to the negative n is equal to just an f of x. That makes the right-hand side better looking, right? There's not that nonlinear term. But then this term right here, this is y. Notice that's not a tick mark, right? Which is why I use this Leibniz notation for derivative here. This is y to the 1 minus n. All right, and then we're not even going to speak of this, which doesn't look very good anyhow. So this term right here, this is y to the 1 minus n. And so we're going to play the typical game that you would play in mathematics, right? And say, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to cover it up. So this is u. Right? This u variable is now y to the 1 minus n. Right? u is a function of x because y is a function of x, but I'm going to use that to cover it up. And so basically what we want to do here is transform the whole equation into... the u variable. Well, that's fine. This piece right here, that's just a u. Right? But then the implication coming out of this statement is what we want to figure out, because we need to figure out what derivatives look like now in this u variable. So that's a du dx. Right? Well, if I take the derivative of y to the 1 minus n with respect to x, I don't explicitly see any x's there. Right? And so when I take that derivative, that is really going to be a derivative with respect to the y variable. Right? So that's the derivative of the outside variable, but I still have to take the derivative of the inside variable. What I'm, the reason why I'm using that language is that this should be, think, make, be making you think of changes. So what happens is that the exponent comes down, so I have 1 minus n out of here, and then I have a y, 
but then I have 1 minus n minus a 1, right, as I take that derivative through standard power rule technique, and then I have dy dx. And so this term right here is just what y to the negative n. So let me recapitulate that stuff, because that's a little... It's kind of a mess, right? So I'll recapitulate over here. What I have is that du dx, this piece, is equal to all this. Right? So actually, if I were to solve for dy dx, y to the negative n, how would it differ? So this is dy dx, and then y to the negative n right here. Oh, wait, negative n, there we go. And then I'm going to divide through by 1 over 1 minus n, right? So really what I did is I solved for this stuff right here. Okay. And Okay, so I mean, what's the point, right? Like, that seems like a bunch of gobbledygook. Well, the point is, is that because of the form of this Bernoulli equation, it happens to work out precisely so that this term that we get to upon this substitution, right, this transformation to the u variable, this term is precisely this term right here. So in the u variable, what do we see? Well, we've just done what we need for the u variable, so we start with the Bernoulli equation. We multiply through by y to the negative n, so that the right-hand side looks nicer. That's one way to think about it. Another is that people just studied equations until um, finally these things popped out to them, right? So by multiplying through by y to the negative n, you make this hideousness right here, which is y to the 1 minus n. You say, hey, I don't like the look of that, so you call that u, and then once you call it u, you need to think about, well, there's a derivative on y hanging out, so if I transform into the u variable, I need to think about what derivatives in u look like. After the application of the chain rule, and maybe I should make that point right here, that this is the chain rule, after the application of the chain rule, if we solve for y prime times y to the negative n, right, then what we have is this term, right, which is now this term in y is that derivative stuff that we didn't want to speak about before, but now in the language of u. So this is 1 over 1 minus n times dy, oh, sorry, du, right, du dx plus p of x times u is equal to f of x. Or maybe, one more simplification, I'm going to isolate this u prime, this du dx term, so this is du dx plus 1 minus n times p of x times u is equal to 1 minus n times f of x. And this is the key result. Why is this the key result? Well, what do we notice about this equation? This equation now is u prime plus some stuff times u is equal to some stuff that doesn't depend on u at all or its derivatives. So this equation is linear it is first order. No matter how it cooks out, you should be able to use the integrating factor method or something, right? It's doable. That's the point. Okay. So, what I'd like to do now, then, is I'd like to use this technique to complete the example that we had in class today, right? so that we can see how to make this thing work. So the example that we had in class today was, let's see, maybe I can fit it all up in here, example. The 
example is x times y prime plus 6 times y is equal to 3xy to the 4 thirds. Okay, so let's mimic those things that we just did, but on this equation. So, I'm going to multiply the whole equation through by y to the negative 4 thirds. Right? And then, if that's the case, the equation looks like x times y prime times y to the negative 4 thirds plus 6 times y to the 1 minus 4 thirds is equal to 3x, and those y's are the same or that, those y's cancel and become 1, right? Next, right, it is not common to have, especially looking at over here, an x in front of the y prime term, right? So it should just be y prime, y to the negative 4 thirds, plus 6 over x, times y to the 1 minus 4 thirds is equal to 3, after we divide 3. So now, according to where this technique hacks out here, I'm going to say that u is equal to y to the 1 minus 4 thirds. If that's the case, then y is really y to the negative 1 third. And so that means to me that the derivative of u with respect to x is Take this negative one-third, bring it down as a power, so that's a negative one-third times y, right? And then I subtract one from the exponent, so I get negative one-third minus a one is negative four-thirds. But remember, we were differentiating with respect to x. As we differentiate with respect to x, y is the intermediate variable, and so this calls for a chain rule where I have dy dx right here. And so the key, key point that comes out of this is that, no, don't fall over markers. Okay, the key point that comes out of this is that this quantity right here is identically So if we want to rewrite in the u variable, so if we rewrite this in the u variable, what do we have? We have this red boxed quantity here is, okay, this is y to the negative 4 thirds y prime. That's totally what this is right here. Then solving for d, or solving for that term, I get a negative 3 times du dx plus 6 over x, right, but this y to the negative, or to the 1 minus 4 thirds, that is totally what I've just demanded u to be. So this is u, and then I have a 3. Okay. This equation is linear. Right? It is not a constant coefficient equation. Right? For me to use undetermined coefficients, I would want to see a constant right here. So this is actually, after one step, u du dx minus 2 over x u is equal to, what, 3 divided by negative 3 is a negative 1. All right, so I have to use integrating factors. So I'm going to make this really elaborate mu right here so that we can tell the difference between the u and the mu. All right, and so then I get an e to the integral of negative 2 over x dx. 
which is equal to d to the negative 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x, which is equal to e to the natural log of the absolute value of x to the negative 2. Now, since x is under an absolute value sign, it could be a positive x or a negative x right there. That's what we talked about in class. But since I square it, this is really 1 over x squared. And I release those absolute value signs. If that's the case, then the derivative with respect to x of mu times u, the greatest variable there, is equal to 1 over x squared, so the integrating factor, times what was left on the right-hand side, which is a 3. So that means that if I anti-differentiate this left-hand side with respect to x, and this right-hand side with respect to x, I'll have mu, which is 1 over x squared, times u, and that is equal to the integral of 3 over x squared dx. What is that integral? Well, that would be x to the negative 3, with a negative out front, plus c. So now, so now, if I were to solve for u of x, this is equal to, multiply the the whole equation through by this x squared, right? And when I multiply through by this x squared, the c picks up an x squared. The x to the negative 3 picks up an x squared. So let's just write it. x squared times negative x to the negative 3 plus c, which is equal to cx squared minus, after this negative 3, x to the negative 3 plus, times x squared. The bases are the same, so I add the exponent, and this is just an x to the negative 1. And seemingly, I'm done, right? Except I need to remember that I wasn't solving a problem on the u variable. I was solving a problem on the y variable, and so the u variable is related to the y variable by this transformation. All right, so how do I solve for y? I um, take, okay, so let's just write it this way. If u is equal to y to the negative one-third, then that means that y of x is equal to u to the negative three. All right, so if I raise this to the negative three, the negatives definitely will cancel. Now if I exponentiate an exponent, they multiply. So I get a negative three onto a negative one-third, giving me my y. Right, so that means that all of this is equal to 1 over, now let me break down a line here, this means then that y of x is equal to 1 over cx squared minus um, x to the negative 1, all of this is q. That's the answer. That is the Bernoulli technique, the Bernoulli transformation. Okay, so quick recap. A very specific nonlinear equation can be transformed into a linear equation. The transformation works by multiplying the whole equation through by y to the negative m, which is the specific type of nonlinearity here, and then covering up all of these hideous y to the negative or to the 1 minus n variables. If you cover them up with this new transformation u, right, then it turns out that this hunk of junk right here that we don't really want to look at, right, becomes related to the derivative of u in a very simple way so as to find a linearity. Right, so what you have to do to employ this method is the following. One, very important first part is get the equation in standard form. Two, define your u. Three, 
solve the U problem. And then four, obeying that transformation, get back to the Y variable. Okay. Good luck. We will have more examples on Wednesday.